All right, I want to do just a short video on chapter three and R. There's a few things that I want to slow down and, and talk about. I think the first and most important thing that you can do when you're learning R is know that there's help built into the program itself. So if you were to type help and then put in whatever code you want to learn about. So let's say I want to learn more about the standard deviation code. I could do help SD. SD is for standard deviation, and it'll come up with documentation on that code. It'll tell you what are your different arguments that you have, uh, and so on. Uh, and so this help thing is always built in. Just always keep that in the back of your mind, that if you don't know what the different options are or what you're supposed to do, you can access that documentation at any point because it's built into the program. Now, one thing that I did last time that I just want to emphasize here is how to store data. We use the C uh, code C is for concatenate that just means put together and so if I were to put together say the numbers uh, one three four five and then uh, if I were to take um, there, there's two ways to concatenate data you can write x equals C one three four five or you can write um, less than dash uh, and then let's just make seven eight nine two uh, and so this will give you the lists x and y so that's how you store those and then you can also concatenate lists themselves. So if you want to put together the list X and Y, you could uh, just concatenate those two and that'll give you one, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, two. And so that's kind of the basics to how you store data. There's some fancy ways that if you have data stored in an Excel file, you can pull it from a table. Um, I, I'm not going to get into that. I don't really think you'll need to do that. That's a little easier to do with our studio than with R. Uh, but I think for homework problems, you, we're not going to really need to worry about that. So what I want to do is I want to show you a few things related to chapter three. So of course we can do the mean. Okay, so those are going to be the, the big ones, the median. Um, there is no really uh, code for mode. So let's actually do this. Let's redefine, let's define W as the code Z with an extra, five, two extra fives and a four. Okay, so W is going to be that data set now. So W has probably 11, if I did it right, 11 elements in it. And there's no mode button here, but what there is is there's this thing called table. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna put all the values that you have in your data set and then list how many times they appear there. And so you can use this to help you find the mode because it appears five appears three times, four appears twice, everything else appears once. Okay, and so if we look, indeed five appears three times, four appears twice, everything else appears once. So you can use that to help you find the mode, although it's not exactly a mode uh, key. It's not a function, okay? It's not a code that you can use to find the mode. Um, and so you can do the mean and the median that way. You can use the table function to find the mode. You can do standard deviation like we talked about, okay? So if you find, wanna find the standard deviation of, uh, I don't know why I'm using Z instead of W, it doesn't matter. Um, the standard deviation squared is called the variance. So you can do VAR, okay? Or you could just find the standard deviation squared okay so that'll be the same value that 8.41 and then other than that there's the five number summary the five number summary refers to the minimum the first quartile second quartile third quartile and the maximum and so if you were to find the five number summary it'd just be five num and then our data set x and then that'll give you the first quartile the second quartile, the third quartile, and so on. So the, the, remember the first quartile is the point up to which 25% uh, of the data occurs. And the second quartile is the point up to which half the data occurs. So in other words, half the data is before, half is after. So the second quartile is actually the median. And then the third quartile is the point up to which 75% of the data is before it, 25% is after it, okay, and so on. So that's what, uh, that's what those numbers are. There's the interquartile range function so iqr the only thing i have to warn you about is that i'm not a big fan of the iqr and i'm not a big fan of the box plot functions and the reason for that is that the way that r handles some of the choices and the way that my math lab handles some of the choices for computing medians and quartiles and things are a little bit different so there's a, a quartile function uh, it's actually a quantile excuse me and so if you wanted to compute the 25th uh, 25 percent quantile this is not going to agree with what the book would want for the 25 percent quantile so the 0.25 is not actually q1 
Um, it's going to be a little bit different. It'll be 2.75 is how it actually computes it. Um, don't worry about the formula. I think the five number summary is the way to go. Okay, so five num, and that'll give you the first quartile, the second quartile, the third quartile, and so on. Okay, so pretty straightforward. IQR is going to follow the same patterns as quantile. Sometimes it'll agree with what we want, sometimes it won't. So I, I just like to compute IQR by hand. Uh, and so if we know what Q1 and Q3 are, we can do that. Um, and I think those are finally the last codes to talk about. I guess there's also the population standard deviation, which is not a, a really common thing, but let's say that we have a, a data set. We have eight numbers and we can compute the standard deviation of the data set. That's no problem. Now, if we wanna compute the population standard deviation, what we wanna do is we wanna realize that we're gonna do the same calculation as the sample standard deviation, except instead of dividing by square root of seven, we divide by square root of eight. So I'm going to multiply by square root of seven over square root of eight to change the square root of seven and the denominator to square root of eight. Uh, and so you would multiply by the square root of seven eighths. And then that number, it's going to be a little bit smaller because the denominator is larger, uh, but that number is going to give you the population standard deviation. So you could do it that way. Okay. So uh, I think that's really all the codes that we need for chapter three. Okay. But if there's anything more, I'll, I'll add it.